During a scary moment in tonight's Mets-Braves game, Kevin Pillar was hit in the face by a pitch and thankfully was able to walk off under his own power, but appeared to suffer a pretty significant injury to the face. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and this is your number one source for learning about the unique medical side of the world of sports. Now while certainly many of you are never going to get hit with a 94 mile per hour fastball, nosebleeds are actually a pretty relevant thing in everyday life, let alone sports. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at what happened, talk about nosebleeds, how we manage them, and some other aspects of what could have happened here. Now, of course, the injury itself is no mystery. This pitch came in and appeared to strike Pilar pretty much square in the nose, square in the face. Of course, we just saw Bryce Harper get hit in the face with a pitch, and in that instance, it kind of grazed just below the eye, kind of right on the cheekbone, and no fractures, he was okay. And honestly, the first thing here when I see something like this is concern for an eye injury, because in the grand scheme of things, that's going to be the most detrimental to not only his career, but also his just daily well-being. So while we saw the blood coming from the nose, right away, number one, we have to make sure there's no eye injury. It sounds morbid, but in all honesty, if you're going to get hit in the face with a 94 mile per hour fastball, the nose is probably the best place that it could hit you. Certainly from what we saw, it looks like he avoided direct trauma to the eye. So that's at least a good thing overall here. Let's talk about nose bleeds and nose injuries. The medical term for a nosebleed is epistaxis. And here we're looking at basically a cross section as if we've just cut directly down through the head. All of this pink tissue in through here is what we call the oral and nasal mucosa. It's the tissue that's aligned with blood vessels that runs all up through our nose, through our airway, and through our mouth. When we think about a nosebleed, there's one key area that we're really focused on where oftentimes the injury has occurred. That's a spot more in the front of the nose called Kieselbach's plexus. It's a plexus because it's a collection of blood vessels that have all come in to sort of terminate in this one area where you have capillaries or small little blood vessels that are especially susceptible to rupture and then subsequent bleeding. Specifically with Kieselbach's plexus, there's five individual arteries that ultimately come down to form up in this area. We have the anterior ethmoidal artery that comes in from above the nose, the posterior ethmoidal artery that comes in from just behind it, the sphenopalatine that's gonna come from more near the sphenoid bone, the greater palatine that kind of comes down across and then dips up from below that bone at the roof of the mouth, and then in the front, the superior labial artery that actually comes from one of the facial arteries. So all five of these arteries come together in this area called Kieselbox plexus in the front of the nose, and this is oftentimes the area where the bleeding is coming from with epistaxis. In general, when we talk about nosebleeds, we can divide them into anterior and posterior in terms of the front of the nose or the back of the nose, and far and away, anterior nose bleeding is more common. So number one, if you develop a nosebleed, do not tilt your head backwards. Tilt your head forwards and apply pressure down in the squishy portion of your nose, not at the top where the bone is because you're not pushing on anything if you're pressing on the bone, but down in the squishy part of your nose and tilt forward. And you've got to hold pressure for a long time, at least five minutes, sometimes even up to 15, 20 minutes. These blood vessels have to clot off in order for the bleeding to stop. And so you can't just hold temporarily and release. If you lean backwards, that blood can collect in the back of your nose and ultimately go down into your throat, cause nausea, compromise your airway, and so you wanna make sure you stay leaning forward so that all the blood drains out of the front instead of going back into your throat. If it's bad enough that they have to go to a doctor, then sometimes they'll apply direct medications that actually act to tighten or vasoconstrict those blood vessels to help stop the bleeding. If that's ineffective, sometimes they'll go in with a cautery tool and actually try to burn the tips of those blood vessels to get them to stop and sometimes even have to pack the entire nose with this packing material to again, try to stop the bleeding. So lean your head forward, squeeze the front squishy part of your nose and hold it for a long time. And if it's concerning enough, make sure you go see a doctor. Now, the other parts here, of course, with taking a baseball to the face like this is we're gonna have to worry about nose fractures. Like I said, when you're feeling that top portion of your nose, that's truly the nasal bone. It's just that upper little bridge of your nose that I have highlighted here that's actually a bone. Everything else that forms this squishy part of your nose is cartilage. Running then down the middle of the nose is your septum, and one of the big complications we worry about with the nose injury is a septal hematoma, where basically a blood clot or a collection of blood forms within that septum inside the nose, which if not treated appropriately can actually cause that tissue to die off and lead to all kinds of complications. You can see though how close in proximity the orbital socket is to the nose. And so even though it didn't look like there was bleeding, certainly for Pilar, we've got to make sure there was no eye injury and that everything's okay on that front. Then of course, facial fractures are gonna be on the differential here. Once you've stopped that initial bleeding, 
from the epistaxis. So if this is just a nosebleed, he's actually pretty lucky to have avoided this ball hitting him directly in the eye because a 94 mile per hour pitch hitting you directly in the orbit is gonna be, of course, very, very severe. But that's it for the video. I hope it was educational and you were able to learn something here. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later.